there yarn lovers, it's Gary and I'm coming to you from my happy place, the Yarn Corner here on Vancouver Island in Canada. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Today is Friday, February the 24th, 2023, and this is not a regular podcast of mine. I'm jumping in here real quick to answer a hashtag. I was tagged by Dala. Now she has a YouTube channel called the Crafty Yarn Owl with Dala, and I'll link her channel down below along with the hashtag that she originated and answered questions regarding whether you're going to work up your whips or rip them out. So the hashtag is called whip it up or rip it out. And I've watched other people answer this hashtag. Mine's going to be a little different. I do have whips on the go, so I don't know whether they're they classify as rip it, rip it out or work it up. So I am working on them. So I won't talk about those, but I do have a lot of project bags, which have been waiting in queue and I've put them to the side, out of mind, out of sight. And I've jumped on other projects that have caught my attention. So I will be going through the yarn that I chose to put in these bags with projects in mind. And there is one or two that have been hanging around for a long time. I'm going to say a year, a year and a half. One of them or two of them are works in pro progress. And there's also a project that uh, I ripped out. So I'll be covering all of those things. And you know, to be accountable, maybe to reminisce about some of those dream makes that I chose months to years ago. And um, and then as a refresher for myself, maybe want to pick one or two of them up to work them up and see how they, they go. Before I get started talking about my projects, I want to talk about what Hank's wearing. Hank's my man form here. He is wearing the Laconi. It is a crocheted shawl, triangle shawl, and the designer is Claudia Rampritch. And I'm so sorry if I'm butchering your name, Claudia. Uh, I have purchased a number of Claudia's patterns and they're in my queue as well, ready to be worked up. I really enjoyed this one. It told a wonderful story of every row, if I'm doing a fillet kind of section, uh, I kind of got the full glory of that lace work in the fillet popping out after the completion of the section. It was like a secret that was being, you know, revealed to me. And the bobble stitch was quite new and I really enjoyed working on this. It was with the Stanley Vegan Cake and yeah, I'll link her connection, uh, Claudia's connection down below if you're interested in, in making the Laconi yourself where you can find her pattern. So we'll get, jump into my first and longest languishing project, which is in my dabbling hook, hook uh, that's Rel. And she made this beautiful bag. I purchased it from her Etsy store and I absolutely love this bag, but I wanna get back to using the bag. And it's been housing, I think that my longest, longest whip that has not, been worked on for, I'm going to say, over a year, maybe two. <laughs> so here it is here. I had some leftovers of Cascade Tangier yarn. I had knitted up a, uh, a jumper, like a boxy jumper, and I had some leftovers and I wanted to do some colour work in crochet using the seed stitch or the linen stitch, whichever you prefer, and just creating this yoke. Uh, I didn't end up finishing it. I don't know why, but I thought I want to rip it out and use it for hexagons and create a, a hexagon modular piece in crochet because I have a whole bunch of, oh, they're the Blue Jays. I have a whole bunch of, uh, of the offcuts where I had to kind of piece together and color control a little bit when I was working on the other jumper. And I thought to myself, I'm going to add in another yarn that is very similar to the Tangier from Cascade. And it's the, uh, what is it called? Cottony Silk? Cottony Silk or something from Loops and Threads. And I will add, I have like six balls of that to make a decent sized project. So that is going to be ripped. Not whipped up, but ripped out. <laughs> The next project I think I want to talk about moving along in the idea of what to do with it 
is housed in my mother-in-law's wonderful gift that she made me at Christmas. Uh, these were handmade bags and they have a drawstring. I really love this one here. It's got giraffes on it in a nice, it's what, gold, kind of like a gold leaf. It's all shiny and stuff. I really like it. And she'd made them for putting gifts for Christmas in. So I kept this bag because I thought I could use it in my little projects. And these are leftovers from some socks that I had uh, done the afterthought heels, toes and cuffs. And I want to do something with them, but I'm not sure. And they've been sitting in there for over a year. And I'm thinking maybe I could make some fingerless gloves out of them. I'd probably have to knit more of this tube. So that's an idea as well on if I get the time to to work on something or if I'm moving around a lot and I'm on the go, if I'm in the car or whatever, I could maybe pick this up. It's quite a light and easy to move around project. So I've got some yarn in here just to, you know, fill in those extra bits and pieces for if I'm making single fingerless gloves. And the yarn that I got in this one was uh, generously hand cranked by my friend Melinda and I think that this yarn was the Croy Sock from Peyton's. I'm pretty sure it was. I've got the labels in here but yeah I'm not too sure. I've got one that says Sundance and I don't think it's that one at all. <laughs> Maybe it is. I don't know. It's called Color Name is Green. So it might be this one and that's the Hirschner's yarn. Yeah, so that's whip number two that may turn into something soon. The next project that I want to talk about is housed in this beautifully handmade project bag. It's a drawstring box bottom from my friend Kit. Now, Kit has a YouTube channel. It is all things crochet and knit with Kit. I haven't seen a video from Kit for a while and you know, I do miss my kit. So hi kid, if you're watching, I love this bag. And it has a project that has been sitting in here for the longest time, I think over a year as well, similar to the Dabbling Hooks bag. And this is the yarn that was in the bag for a project. And I love this yarn. It's a little fuzzy. It's a three weight, I believe. And maybe a two. Is it a two weight? It's kind of like between a two and a three. And it's the Lana Grossa Gomitolo Duo 250. It's a name there. Absolutely love it. It's very, very soft and fuzzy. Now, I've been wanting to use the yarn in a, in a pattern here. And this pattern's all crunched up. I'm so sorry. But it's the Lightweight Hipster Shawl by Hockey Locatelli. And I'm not sure whether this is a paid for pattern or whether it's free, but um, it uses a three weight yarn. And I got two of them because I know that I might need a little bit extra from the number of uh, meters and yards that it are in the um, are in the pattern. So that is one that I'd like to make up as well. But here it goes back in the bag. And I'm happy that I've pulled these out with this tag because they were sitting there for the longest time and haven't re recognized that they were holding yarn and have forgotten all about it. Next project is in this wonderful bag, which was gifted to me by Pamela. Now Pamela has a YouTube channel. It is Pamela's Crochet and Knit Corner. And this is uh, Yarned and Dangerous. I absolutely love this bag. Now, I will link down the storefront where Pamela found this as well uh, in the description box. So if you're looking for a product like this, that you'll find it at their sale point, whether it's website or Etsy, I'm not too sure. But I'll figure that out and I'll put it in the description box. I love this bag so much. It's been with me 
across to Florida when me and my hubby Chad went on our cruise and uh, yeah it was in my carry-on bag and I was the lucky one that they wanted to open the bag up and take a look through so that bag came out and I think the um, security, security, airport security were quite interested in uh, what the message was so they did pull it out and gave it a second look. So the yarn that's in here this project I really want to work on because the yarn called to me and spoke to me first. Uh, then the project came to mind. You know, you get that sort of, whether it's the project that speaks to you, like a pattern, or if the yarn tells you that it wants to be something. This yarn is amazing. And I caked up one hank already, eager to use it. And it's then been put in this bag with my notes about what I want to do with it. And there it's been kind of like left, but I do want to now jump into maybe putting this on my needles next. I do have one other project that I want to start before starting this one, but look at the yarn. Oh my goodness. I have six hanks. One has been made into a cake and this was a gift by my friend Crystal over at Bag of Day. I absolutely love the yarn. It is the Croft and it's by her favorite or one of her favorite yarn distributors and makers. It's from West Yorkshire Spinners. And it's a little toothy, but I like that. I love the color in this. As you know, my favorite color is green. And this is called Rolling Hills. Oh my goodness. So I have come up with some ideas in an old sketchbook. And because the sketchbook hasn't been used much, like because I filled it up and I started a new one, I hadn't looked at the pattern for the longest time or my idea of what I'm going to do. So here's the sketch that I made probably around six months ago, I'd say. And I want to do a sweater vest. First of all, I'll work on the body part just in case the six hanks run out. And then if I have enough, I'll do the hoodie. And I'm looking at doing a Celtic knot or a Celtic plait. I'm not sure about the other textures or how it's going to work up, whether I'm going to do a, a main central piece for the chest part and then more of the textural on the sides. But I, I did find this in my notes and that's the Celtic plait here up, up in this section here. So it weaves in together and I'm thinking that that might be my central panel piece that goes down the middle and then maybe do an elongated seed stitch for the side and give it, giving it some more textural. And yeah, that's another project that I want to start soon. <laughs> the next thing that I want to show you is equally one that I want to start real soon. And this one is housed in a more re this one was more recently put together for a project and I crocheted around I-cord which I have a little I-cord cranker and I made this project bag. I am eager very much so to use some gifted yarn as well and this one was from a friend who would like to remain anonymous and I appreciate that so you know who you are. This is a wonderful yarn which is called Bumblebee Acres Fibre Farm. And the colourway is called Outlander Scottish Rose. It's inspired by the Outlander uh, series on TV. So I have three of them. And then I have accompanying yarn as well which I want to add in color work and I have two of these kind of like tan sandy colored yarns and then I have as an option for a third color I have these two red hanks here and these were a generous gift as well oh, it's not coming to me right now but I'll leave all of the gifted yarns down below and and indicate who these yarns came from this is a beautiful soft yarn. I absolutely love it. So they're in my bag 
And I'll show you what I'm thinking of doing. I have, I'm in two minds right now about which way to take it, but I want to do a, a men's top, but use the pattern from this cardigan here. I absolutely love it. Uh, this one's more so speaking to me that there are two colors uh, used in the in the color arrangement, and it's called the Fair Isle Fair Isle Cardigan, and it's in the Knit Noro book here. This was a gift as well by Kim from Affordably Crafty. I love this book. I've already knitted up. I think two things from here and this will be my third one if I choose that that pattern and the other one that I was thinking of doing I mean two minds but I can always keep one for this project using that yarn and then choose another yarn but I really love this pattern here and I'm thinking I would do that in a another sweater vest really thick band around the waist, start the pattern, and then, uh, yeah, do maybe a V-neck or a crew neck, depending on like which one that I choose. And yeah, just make a, a sweater vest with no sleeves. So this is in the Thousand Japanese Knitting and Crochet Stitches that I've chosen. The color work for those three colors that I just showed you in my crocheted project bag. Then I have this bag here, which is another gift from, uh, what is it? I think it's the Erin Lane and Emmy Phillips gifted me this bag. It's called I Rescue Yarn. I'm kind of a hero. I love I love it so much. You can't read it because it's a little shiny and similar color, but there it is there. It's a drawstring bag. And in here, I have my Stephen West Best Knits. And it's been in the bag for a while because <laughs> I feel terrible. I should be more careful with my, with my pattern books. But I'm planning on doing the... It's the, doo -doo -doo, here it is here, dotted braise. That's the pattern there. It's a shawl and it has perforations that kind of go in a nice arc formation. So you have like little eyelets that sort of are repetitious in a pattern and they kind of spread out over the design in a lovely way. So I've got that one and in there are three yarns, which I'm not sure how I'm going to use for it, whether I'm going to choose one that will be just um, a full skein and then maybe accent those dotted rays with uh, like maybe a sparkly yarn or somehow incorporate all three together. So these are the yarns here. And again, if I think I purchased these two myself. And this one here was a gifted yarn by my friend, Penny Bolton. She hand dyed this herself. So I really want to get that one somehow incorporated. So yeah, look at that beautiful dye job. And I think they will work all together nicely in a dotted raise. And my last whip that I have here in a, in a bag has already been ripped out. So... I should have really shown you this, but I did rip it out about two months ago. It was one of my very first projects I crocheted and I had really sloppy stitches. I didn't choose a good yarn for the pattern and that's no reflection on the pattern that I used. It was just me being a, a new crocheter and I thought after time, you know, I really like the yarn and I want to try and do something better with it that I know that I would wear. And so I ripped it out two months ago, but it's still sitting in this bag here, which is a quilted handmade bag from Melinda. And I absolutely love this bag. Thank you, Melinda. So 
let's take a look. I even have crochet hooks in here, which is amazing because I was looking at for these crochet hooks a while back and I couldn't find them. So I'm going to set them aside so I don't lose them again. And this is hand dyed yarn that I did probably one of my very first hand dyes. And I had uh, panels of this uh, broken down in the previous pattern that I that I frogged and here is some more yarn here this one the the beigey one is wasn't in the project but I added it into this uh, little project bag because I want to hold two yarns together two fingering weight yarns and see which one I want blended that blends best and I'm going to do fingerless mittens. It's really cold here right now and I was, um, I had some coffee the other day and I was walking out on the street and my hands were getting frozen. So I was like, I need to make myself some fingerless mittens. And I have a crocheted uh, pattern that I've been thinking would work really nicely with this. And it's over on Crystal from Bag of Day. It's her fingerless crochet gloves. And I'll link that down below as well in the description box. So I'm going to be sorting through that, figuring out which two I'm going to hold together with the, with the hand dyed yarn. And my beautiful project bag, which I love. So that concludes all of the projects. I think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's seven projects. And I do have more, as I did say. They're all around the room, uh, but that'll do it for now. And I have to tag some people, but this has been such a, the tag has gone around already. I'm not, not sure who's been tagged and who's already done the video. So I'm going to open it up to everyone who is a content creator and wants to try the tag, tag your it, uh, just use the hashtag whip it up or rip it out so that we can all find, uh, the content. And if you are, aren't a content creator, but would like to talk about your whips that you have going and ones that you want to rip out, you can also leave them down in the, in the comment section of this video and tell me what it is, how long you've been leaving your project around for and whether or not you're going to rip it. So yeah, with that, I'll catch you up in the next video and I hope you're all doing well and staying safe. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.